Hello good people of YouTube, Mount Ben here, and today I'm going to be walking you through how I have my Kerfer set up, and how um, I play her. A lot of you guys have asked me to do this, and I'm sorry it's taking me so long to get to this, I've just, you know, I get an idea for a video in my head, and I want to get it out, but I'm getting this out now because more than a few of you have asked for this. Alright, so the way I have my Kerfer set up is I have Secondary Armaments Mod 1, Damage Con 1, Secondary Armaments Mod 2, Damage Con 2, Concealment module and secondary armaments mod 3. So, complete and total secondary build as far as the modules go. Now, I do have the legendary module for Kerfers, but I do not think it is worth it. The amount that it decreases the range of your main battery guns, it's it's ridiculous. Having an 18.9 kilometers range at tier 10 is, isn't going to cut it. Because, yes, while it does make you a monster at brawling, it makes you really really meh the rest of the time now if you were just in a I don't know if you just get lucky and like every game you're playing you're getting in brawls with the curve worse and yeah it's worth it but most of the time in tier 10 games the first half to two-thirds of the match it's gonna be a sniper fest and you don't need well, you do need the 20 kilometer range to in order to at least contribute to that somewhat if you are, if your range is capped out at 18.9 kilometers, it's it's just not gonna <laughs> you're not gonna be able to contribute to the to the game for the first half of a tier 10 match, unless you get really close. And then if you get really close, which 18 kilometers is pretty close by tier 10 standards, you're gonna get focus fired by um, everyone and their grandmothers and their grandmother's niece. It, it's a simple fact of playing the curve first. That that's what's gonna happen. So I don't think the legendary module is worth it. But I do use the 420mm guns and not the 406s. The four I do like the bigger punch of the 420s because when you're brawling and you get in close, you want all of your shots to just be doing massive damage because usually when you brawl, if you get in close, you know, do the whole drive-by thing, you're only going to get one chance to absolutely just delete them. And with the 420s, you have a very, very good chance of getting that shot in. Now, the 406s aren't bad. If you're going for more of... A higher DPS than yes the 406s of course would be better but I do like the 420s. Alright so moving to my captain skills this is a 19 point captain and I have preventive maintenance because uh, you know you have all your secondaries you want to increase their chance of survival and preventive, preventive maintenance does do that for you. Now I've seen some people with the curve first take um, priority target when I'm in a battleship I always just assume that everyone's targeting me because I'm a damage pinata so I don't take priority target on any of my battleships. On my cruisers I do because, you know, it's a cruiser. But on, again, on, battleship, just, on a battleship, I'm just, I'm just assuming everyone wants my bacon. And then I have expert marksmen, and I've heard some people say this is a bad choice and I should drop it. But when you're close in brawling, this helps out a lot. Because it's very easy to outrun your, your turrets when you're brawling. Because, you know, you're getting in very close. Your target's very close. You're both maneuvering. And you need your turrets to keep up. And that's why I have Expert Marksman. And then I have BFT and AFT, of course, to buff up the secondaries even more. And this also helps out helps out the AA a bit. And then I went back, got Adrenaline Rush. Because, of course, when you're um, brawling and... Well, when you're playing Kerfers in general, you may take a lot of damage because it's... A humongous ship is, I believe, it is the biggest, just in sheer size, uh, tier 10 battleship. Has the most health points out of the other tier 10 battleships, too, at 105 until the Russian battleships come out uh, at 105,000. And this will not only help your your main armaments uh, reload pick up faster, but your secondaries. A low health Kerr first with Adrenaline Rush, th their secondaries, they just don't stop, as you'll see in some clips that I'll play here in a second. Now, in addition to that, I also have Superintendent for an extra heal, extra charge of that nice German hydroacoustic search, and an extra fighter plane, which is really valuable right now in the current state of the carrier rework. So that's all fine and dandy. Now, when you come to your final four point, um, four, four point captain skill, it's really down to two choices. Do you want manual secondaries or do you want IFHE? Now, IFHE will give your secondaries the ability to do damage to battleships to some battleships um but you won't get that nice increase in dispersion that you get with um the manual secondary skill 
and I went with the manual secondary because I did try both of them out and then the IFHE did work pretty well for me when I would get in really close. I brought with a Yamato and it did some nice chip damage to it. But if you have the second the uh, manual fire for secondaries, it will the ship the curve for secondaries will absolutely just rip through cruisers and destroyers and it because the accuracy is just so much better and the German secondaries they already get that really nice German HE pin because the German the Germans get that really nice um, pin HE pin uh, value it's really really nice really good at melting cruisers and destroyers and that's why I took it now it's also st it still makes it way better against battleships than, than rather than just you know having nothing because for one, they're at the um, secondaries are way more accurate at range, and two, couple this with adrenaline rush when you're at low health, you can be spewing so much fire down range that you can be setting a lot of fires, especially on battleships. So that's where a lot of damage on the secondaries versus the, the battleships come from, and that's why I have this setup. Again, this is just my setup. You can run it several several different ways. You can go for a survivability build. You can go for... I've seen someone with a stealth build before. It was a bit strange, but I mean, whatever floats your goat. But this is how I play Kerr first. Well, this is how I, this is how I set up Kerr first. And let me tell you about how I play Kerr first now. So, as you guys know, I am really aggressive in Kerr first. I try to stick with the cruisers. And I try to get the cruisers to push in with me because, you know... One or two cruisers and a Kerr first pushing together, it's a very scary thing for the enemy team because they not only have cruisers pushing in, but you have the but you have uh, the Kerr first pushing in, and the Kerr first is this big, huge, just floating chunk of steel ball of doom <laughs> when it comes to being the close range. And if it's an American cruiser that you know it, that we're having to push, I generally don't give a crap and I will just get in their face because one they don't have torpedoes and two your secondaries can absolutely just melt right through their armor so Des Moines and Wustos when you close the gap and get like under like eight kilometers they're done there's nothing they can do they can try to run they can throw some HC at you they might start a fire or two before you kill them especially if you have the 420s because the 420s really don't care about their armor um, you can just blast right through them the French ones too, again the 420s don't really care too much about their armor, and the French cruisers do have torpedoes, but again, they have their armor is 32mm everywhere, so it doesn't really matter how they're angling, your secondaries are going to be chewing through them as you're pushing them. Now ideally, ideally, that's how that, that it works in the car first, you have two cruisers with you, and you well one or two if you even just have one pushing with you it's fantastic you have two it's amazing and you're probably unstoppable unless you come across a larger force now is that how it always works out no not really there's plenty of times I've, and you guys have seen that well i try to get the team to push and they'll start the push but then they'll abandon the push and that's the thing about the curve first when the push gets abandoned you're gonna hurt because you have to turn all the way around because the Kerfers is not a ship that you can stop, bow tank, and back up. It's too big. It has this humongous deck space on it. So it's very susceptible to HE spam. Maybe not some not so much HE pins, but fires. This ship will be set on fire so much. That's why you also need to equip the um, fire extinguishing flag. Like I said, damage con one and two, and jeez, you'll be on fire a lot in this ship. I'm not gonna lie. And the way, the way to survive this, you have to optimize popping your heal and popping your damage con. You have to play the balancing game between, okay, um, you know, it's just two fires, I'll pop my heal, and that'll mitigate, mitigate the damage. Now, my rule of the curve first is three fires above half health, I let it burn and try to pop the heal and let that mitigate the damage. Three and a half fires below half health, pop damage con. Four fires in each situation, pop damage con. And you have to just ride out those fires and trust me you will survive a lot more and plus as the fire slowly you weight your health your secondaries and your main battery guns because you have adrenaline rush your reload will be getting faster so you have that trade-off at least and also the curve first never 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 go out in the open especially in the early start of the game if you can find you always go to the cap where there's some islands that you can not hide behind but hide in 
Now, hiding behind islands, that's what you see American cruisers and, and British cruisers do. They'll find an island, hu hug it like it's their waifu, and you know, they'll use the beautiful shell arcs to fire over it. You don't hide behind the islands, you hide in the islands. That being said, you keep the islands between you and ships like the Yamato, the Monty, the Republic, you know, and the Convoy, pretty much any other tier 10 battleship. Because you want to keep them away from you while you try to push the cap and deal with any destroyers or cruisers. That's the other thing in the Kerfurst, you need to target the destroyers first. Because Kerfurst has absolute crap torpedo protection, even though in its description it des it's described as like excellent or powerful or something like that. And like, seriously, like some cruisers have better torpedo protection than the Kerfurst. Target the DDs first. First off, your team will, will love you for that. Because your secondaries are really good at melting through destroyers. Once you get done with the, with the cruiser with the destroyers, it's onto the cruisers, of course. Um, and you especially want to target ships like the Wooster. Any type of uh, rapid firing high DPM fire starter like the Wooster. Get that thing done. Now the Minotaur isn't that not that much of a problem because it is a P and it'll, it'll bounce off most of your ship except for the superstructure, but it does get annoying. Zao 2 is one you want to look out for. It's a fire starter. And you, the Kerfus is really good at dealing with the Zao. When the Zao um, slips up, shows you broadside. Kerfus is absolutely great for deleting that thing. And again, it, your secondaries will chew through that as well. Uh, finally, you definitely do not want to go anywhere by yourself in the Kerfurst. Don't do it. It's a big ship, it's a powerful ship, but it's not, it can't hold its own against the enemy team. It can buy you some time against the enemy team. It's great for tanking. Um, it's got that 60mm bow plating that it can actually, it's one of the, it's the only tier 10 battleship that can give the middle finger to the Yami if you angle it correctly and the shells hit the right spot because it only has a little sliver of 32 millimeter bow plating. It has like these nice two 60 millimeter um, bow plating sides that come up and I'll put a picture of it in the video right here. Uh, it's really great and it's funny to bounce shells off, uh, bounce yammy shells. Um, and this ship is absolutely fantastic at dealing with y Yamato's once you close the range because Yamato guns are terribly slow, and if the Yamato, the Yamato just tries to do their backing up thing, where they slam it in reverse, and they, and they just hope that they can pin your bow like they deal with most other tier 10 ships that charge them, it won't really work in Kerfurst, because if you angle correctly, you're just going to bounce their um, shells. And then, of course, you get around to their side and just delete them. I've deleted it. Um, I, yeah, There's a video somewhere on this channel, I forgot the name of it, where I literally delete a Yami, a Musashi, and another Yami, like, back to back. And it's... It's beautiful, and I'm not saying that happens a lot, but I'm just saying that's what the current first can do on a good day. Now, some downsides to the ship, of course, like we said, the the the, the um detection is absolutely horrible. The main battery guns are not accurate at all. Past 15 kilometers, it can you can still hit stuff at max range. You can, but it ain't like the Montana. <laughs> It is not accurate past uh, 15 kilometers, but 15 kilometers in is definitely this thing's sweet zone. Um, and it's not the most maneuverable ship ever, but once you get a feel for how she handles, you can dodge torpedoes quite well. And I've pulled off some pretty awesome dodges in this thing. So anyone who says the torpedo can't do the torpedo, the Kerfers can't do torp beats, they're lying. She can. Just takes her a second. And also with this huge amount of deck space, um, carriers love to drop their bombs on you because there's just all this empty deck space on the curve first. Like, I don't know. Like, they really could have strapped some more AA on this thing. But carriers love you, and your AA isn't fantastic. It's okay. Before the rework, Curfers actually had kind of good AA. It's just that it doesn't have a lot of AA modules. It has a lot of powerful AA mounts, but not a lot of them. So they get knocked out pretty dang easy. So that's another downside. Uh, and again, the torpedo protection, not that great. Um, you will get flooding a lot in this thing if you eat some destroyer torpedoes. They've nerfed uh, the flooding chance of airdrop torpedoes, but so you don't have to worry about those too much anymore. But still, destroyer torpedoes are, are the, the bane of this thing's existence. 
and the entire German lines like that. So by the time you've grinded up to the curve first, you're you are well, well aware of that. So guys, that was just how I have my curve first set up and how I play her and some tips that I want to give you guys. So let me know. Um, do you like the solid video? Do you want to see this for like every tier ten ship that I have? Because I can certainly do that. Um, because because I can certainly do that if you guys want to see that. So if you like the video, drop a like, leave a comment, subscribe. We're going to 1,500 subs if this video will be coming out Monday. I'm recording on Saturday, so you might have hit it by the time this video comes out. So you'll see a thank you video if we did that, and then we'll get to the 1,500 subscriber special. But anyway, again, guys, thanks for watching. Hope all of you are having a great Monday. Hope to see all you guys in the next one.